podcast about knitting and crocheting and my journey to becoming a knitwear and crochet designer full time. Um, yeah, that's a dream. <laughs> my name is Carmen and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and I will list all of the other things right here. It's the week before Christmas and things are becoming quite busy. I want to say stressful but um, there are quite a lot of things I would like to get done before Christmas. I would like to make a wreath. I am working on some placemats and uh, yeah, you know, just some other decoration because we're uh, having family over for Christmas at our place, <sighs> which is kind of a big deal. Um, it's not like super fancy or anything but you know having family over for Christmas I kind of think it's a big deal so yeah and being a recovering perfectionist and all that <laughs> I like to have everything as perfect as possible but you know I don't know so I'm gonna be sharing some things uh, I am making for Christmas um, as well as some finished objects and other things. Uh, I hope you've been doing well. Um, I know Christmas can be a very stressful time and I hope it hasn't been stressful for you. So yeah. Okay, let's just start with, what shall we start with? I have two finished objects. Also, we have two cows going on in the uh, Ravelry group, New Leaf Podcast. One is the Shiver Rainbow Cowl, and I really have to get back to my Shiver Rainbow blanket because I am making, so I, I've designed a, a blanket, a crochet blanket with chevrons in it and a rainbow palette, so I've called it the Shiver Rainbow Blanket, and uh, I've made one earlier in this year, and I've published a pattern which was really popular, and thank you all for your enthusiasm, and right now I am hosting a crochet along to you know, <laughs> make more blankets. So I'm making a bigger version, an Excel version. Um, so it's the same pattern, but with uh, thicker yarn. Um, yeah, so I really have to get back on that. I will show you my Shiver Rainbow blanket when I've put some more work into it because I haven't been working on it because of Christmas gifts and you know, all that jazz. So, um, let's start with a finished object. And I have finished a hat. Um, I have finished a hat for one of my friends. Um, and I'll be sending it to her soon once I block it properly. More on that later. Uh, this is the Tide Knots hat by Shostina Lorkowska from Leeds Knits and I have knit this out of Baby Alpaca DK yarn by Chestnut Cabin who is a indie dyer here in the Netherlands um, and the pattern is a free Ravelry download um, and it uses cables um, and I um, I was trying not to um, use a cable needle for the cables and I could do that on most of the cables but there's also purling involved and with purling uh, sometimes I just need a cable needle um, yeah but um, I'm thinking to do a video for my patreon I always get confused like patreon page and the subscribers on there are patrons <laughs> but um, I always tend to say my patreons but that's not correct but anyway <laughs> um, so I've uh, I'm I've been thinking to do a tutorial for my patrons on uh, twisting cables I mean doing cables without a cable needle um, but it's, you know, I'm just a beginner myself, so I think I'm gonna hold off on that for just a bit longer. Maybe I'll knit another hat or a pair of cabled socks, and maybe I can film somewhere in that, in the, pro in the progress. 
Um, anyway, so um, this was, I won't say it was a complete pleasure to knit because it was not mindless at all, but it was very challenging which I do like because it's very relaxing um, when something is very challenging or very detailed like cross stitch um, I cannot think about anything else because then it's easy to make a mistake so I have to focus and with this oh, that was just the same it was a very relaxing project but it wasn't exactly a pleasure to knit because I <laughs> I needed to look at the pattern a few times every row around um, because you know and I mess up a couple of times and frogging cables it's, I'm not a fan but yeah I really do like the outcome although I'm gonna try it on for you and you'll see why I have to block it again because <laughs> Oh my gosh, I feel like a kid from one of those hip-hop movies or whatever genre it's called. So yeah, I blocked it flat as you can see because it is not drooping like slouchy. Um, yeah, it's just flat here. <laughs> it's a flat hat. I feel like a smurf. Right? <laughs> it's a smurf hat. Yes, so, and in the pattern, Justina says to use a balloon. Um, but, um, so the hat has already turned out a little bit bigger than I wanted it to be. So I thought, okay, I'm not gonna block it too much, um, otherwise it will stretch and be even bigger. Um, so I thought to just wash it and lay it flat to dry but you know as it turns out that wasn't a great idea so I do need to find a balloon somewhere maybe not inflate it too much but just that it gets the crease out you know what I mean just this fold I don't want that so I've uh, heard some people block with plates like a they put a plate in there or a bowl, but um, not sure if that will work for this hat. I think then you would get a folding line in this direction. It might work for berets or something. So yeah, <laughs> that's my first FO. Um, although it's not completely finished yet because it needs some proper blocking. Yeah, but when I properly block it, it will be so beautiful. I really do like the cables. Yeah. And it's super soft. Whoa! <laughs> Suddenly there's some sunshine out there. <laughs> okay. So I need to block this properly and then I can send it off to my friend and I hope she will be happy with it. And I hope that it will fit. Um, and go with her wardrobe, you know, her winter wardrobe, like her shawls and stuff, yeah. I also wanted to say, this purple really reminds me of the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. And the person I'm gifting this to is called Alice, so I might just call this my Cheshire Cat hat. <laughs> Alright, second FO. Uh, I have finished a pair of socks! Yay! And they're so pretty! I love these socks. They are uh, knit out of Nicole C. Mendez yarn in the Little Red Riding Hood colorway. And it's a self-striping sock yarn, so the yarn does all of the work. And um, I also bought some minis from Nicole C. Mendez. She has a shop on Etsy. She's from Germany. Um, so shipping to me was pretty reasonable. So yeah, go check her out. Um, and so I bought some uh, minis as well. And one of them really matched 
the the yarn uh, the self striping yarn so I was very happy but I didn't take into account that um, okay so when knitting the first sock you can just knit until wherever you want and then put in the ribbing but for the second sock and self striping yarns I never really match them so I almost had to finish with a blue stripe and then a blue ribbing which would be kind of weird so I was really happy and really lucky that I finished on a red stripe but still having the blue mm, yeah I'm not too pleased with this so I really have to take into account that if I'm using a matching mini that I do some calculating beforehand and also with the um, heels so I did an afterthought heel I have a tutorial on that on my YouTube channel um, which is called how to knit an afterthought heel and yeah this one so um, I measured and the heel would have to be put in between this white and blue stripe and then I just knit from uh, the yarn and uh, only on the only when I was done I noticed that oh there are two red stripes like right you know very close to each other so what I should have done is just not use this red part and start with uh, green I think because the green is furthest away in both directions so I think I should have started with that so I try to take that into account here I quite like how this one has turned out and um, I've knit this in the opposite um, how do you say this okay so I uh, I had finished this sock and I had measured and the heel would have to be put in between this red and green stripe and I looked at the ball and the first color was green and of course I wouldn't want to start here with the green so I looked at my previous heel and I saw that I needed three stripes so I unraveled I mean I took three stripes worth of yarn off the ball and I started from the opposite direction so I started at the white and then it just kind of matched so this one I knit in the opposite direction of the yarn but if you look at it like this it is the same so anyway I'm not sure if I would do this again with just a one two three four five five striper but um, I've done that before with my uh, trailing clouds yarn uh, which has 12 colors so um, yeah that worked out perfectly Yeah, but still, I really, really like these. The uh, cast off on this one turned out a little bit too tight, but yeah, I'm just gonna wear them, see if they stretch a little bit. I haven't even washed them yet, so yeah. I really like these. So I was supposed to enter these in the Festive Sock Along Cal by Amy from Stranded Dye Works, but that ended November 30th so yeah didn't make it <laughs> but I might still enter it in Wool Jewels um, uh, Caitlin from the Wool Jewel podcast she also has a cowl which is called any sock will do and that is for socks that you will not enter into any other giveaway um, into any other knit along and then you can enter it in hers so I might just do that and I have quite a bit of yarn left um, from the same skein, so I think I will use this in some scrappy socks. I can't wait to knit some stripy scrappy socks. That would be a lot of fun, I think.
Okay, next project is, right, I started some other socks. Um, one of my friends was here and I knit a pair of socks for her two years ago, I think, and it wasn't my, my best pair. I had only just started sock knitting. So, um, and she loves it so much that I thought to knit her a, a new pair. And she was here, so she picked out the yarn. And this is some yarn by Regia. And it's from the Arda and Carlos series. And it's a six ply yarn, so it's, is it a sport weight? It might be sport weight. So it's their six ply yarn. And I didn't notice that, so I just took my 2.5 millimeter needles and then I was like, whoa, this yarn is really thick. Um, and then I noticed it was six ply. So uh, I, initially, I initially cast on or increased to uh, 60 stitches, but I unraveled a little bit. I think I did uh, 56 stitches in the end. Yeah. Right now I have a cute little ankle sock and looks super tiny but it fit me it fits me so it should fit her as well she has about the same size and I think it's so cute it's so cute and I'm using my new interchangeable chaogu needles with the super um, amazing cord but but so I was so um, excited to try these, um, but in the in the joining bit on the cable, there's this hole where you can stick uh, the tightening key, uh, so you can twist on the needle, and that little hole, um, the yarn catches on that, so I might have to file something to make it smoother but I don't really want to um, yeah it's not as smooth as the fixed circulars and that's one of the things that I really really liked about Xiaogu yeah so I can feel some it's it's I can feel some resistance it's not completely smooth so I'm kind of uh, bummed about that but yeah does the cable make up for it i don't know i don't know the thing is that with the set i do have smaller needle sizes now although i'm still using a 2.5 for this so <laughs> yeah and i tried to do an eye of partridge heel flap but I'm not sure if it's the yarn that's variegated or if it just doesn't look right. Um, but I might have misread the instructions. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so I have partridge is where first you slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, and then on the next right side row you knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, right? And I've done that, but it doesn't look right. But it might just be because the yarn is variegated. Feels all right, so. And the person I'm gifting this to is not a knitter, so <laughs> she won't notice. So yeah, it looks fine. So I used um, the pattern by Nathan Taylor, sock magician. I used his, um, toe up heel flap and gusset uh, recipe which is quite nice um, but his recipe only works if you're working for if you're working a sock for yourself because you need your own hand to measure it so and because my friend has the same size it's kind of all right but yeah so these were uh, these are quite speedy. I did this in just a couple of hours, um, maybe five hours in total. Yeah, so that's quite speedy with the six ply sock yarn. 
I wish they made more of this six ply sock yarn. Yeah, so that's my third project. Uh, next up is a project for Christmas. I am making some placemats. I had some linen cloth and some cotton. And I cut um, rectangles from it to make um, placemats. And now I am crocheting and edging on them. Oh, that's the back side. Doesn't look very even, but it's not meant to look perfect. So, um, and I bet if I throw these in a washing machine and iron them one more time, I think they will look just fine. And I, I have finished two already. Oh, three. I have finished three. So I'm crocheting and edging. I'm using a really tiny crochet hook. Where is it? There. Really tiny. It's uh, 1.25 millimeter. And so I finished one uh, white one. And I'm using uh, some recycled silk yarn for the edging. I got this in Tokyo. I've been, this is one of those yarns that I have just not been wanting to use because, but, you know, because it's still from Tokyo and wow, so special and yeah, I've just not been, I've just, how do you say this? So I've been trying to find the perfect project, but of course it doesn't exist, exist. So I'm just using it for this edging. So. I think it's nice. I think it's nice. And for the other placemat, so this is the other color, I'm using some black and white marled yarn. And that one, it's this one. I got this one from Alternate Universe um, from the UK, which is uh, run by my friend Kim who is Kim Smith Happy on Instagram. She also has a YouTube channel, so go check her out. Um, and she, um, this is her recycled yarn, I think. So she had some uh, cones and she wound them off on, um, in little cakes. Um, this is another one. <laughs> Seriously, the lighting today. Uh, I mean, I've been wishing for sun, but yeah, it's very harsh right now. So um, this was the first one that I did. So it's just a single crochet. And it was going uh, very slowly and not very neatly. Um, yeah, it was very, very fiddly. Um, so I thought, okay, this might be so much easier and quicker with blanket stitch which I'm sure you recognize. It's, it's, um, it's just a sewing stitch it's used very often. Um, but turns out that wasn't um, easier or quicker at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't own a sewing machine. Otherwise, I would have just sewn around it probably to help it um, stop fraying. Yeah, but I've done three now, so I need to do the other seven as well. So wish me luck. And then the last project I am working on is the Olga cardigan from Yarn Folk Bookazine. It's this one. And the Olga cardigan is this one. It's also on the back. It's a really cute feminine elegant crochet cardigan um, yeah. there it is yes and I am crocheting it out of Scapius Whirlat 
which is not the yarn called for in the pattern, and the pattern they call for Scapia's uh, Sweet Treat or Sugar Rush, which is this um, really thin cotton yarn. But I chose to go for a slightly thicker yarn uh, to make it easier on the hands to <laughs> crochet. And I'm working up size small. And the pattern goes up to XXL, I believe. Um, yes, XXL. But, uh, you know, I'm making size small with a larger, um, thicker yarn. So this hopefully will turn into a size M or somewhere in between. So you could totally uh, modify it. Um, and it's filet crochet, so I'm guessing it is, it will be quite stretchy as well. Um, I haven't done too much on this. Last time I had just, um, started a new ball. So I have done this much, but it goes all the way around. So that's this much on this side and this much on the other side as well. Uh, so this is one sleeve, so I have that almost finished. Uh, I need to do one, two, three, I need to do one more block here, and then this is finished. The other sleeve is already finished up to that part. See, one, two, three, four of those fillet blocks, kind of like polka dots. Yeah, and then I'm going to get started with the center. Um, I'm not even sure how the construction is going, but um, yeah, it's been really enjoyable so far. And really quick as well, um, but because of gift knitting and socks and stuff and um, I haven't been able to work that much on this one. Yeah, so now the placemats have um, gone to the top of my priority list and after that I will work on the Olga cardigan. But I do have some knitting in the future. <laughs> of course I have knitting in the future, but I have some planned knitting projects. So there is this new sweater, oh I have to look up the name, by um, Verena Kors, um, who is Sustainablist Co. She was the wool club, I think. Yeah. Verena Kors, who is Sustainablist Co. on Instagram, she has designed a new sweater, which is amazing. It's called the Ice Flowers Sweater. I'm going to show you a picture here. So it has color work all the way to the middle, kind of like to the waist, I mean, and to the elbow on the arms. I really, really like that. Um, let's see if I can find some more pictures. It's stunning. It is stunning. Can you see that? So this is exactly what I've been looking for. Um, I've been looking for a colorwork sweater that is not overly Christmassy or seasonal. And with this one, yeah, I did find it kind of uh, neutral. Does it focus? Yeah, now it is. So yeah, I think I think it was uh, kind of neutral. So this is exactly the kind of sweater that I've been looking for. Um, I have bought some DK yarn at Yarndale, um, which is, I've bought a solid color, which is a solid kind of burgundy wine red color, and then I got some uh, beautiful yarns from Beehive Yarns. So these are the yarns I'm talking about. This is the burgundy um, DK yarn. I think it's recycled yarn, maybe. Um, but it's very, very cheap. And uh, beehive yarns, I have two uh, variegated yarns or speckled yarns, and I think 
that would look amazing with this. And because I have two of them, um, and they don't contrast as well to each other. Uh, how do you say that? I cannot use these as contrasting colors in color work. So I am going to use these together as a contrast color. So they will kind of be like, I don't want to say gradient, but um, I think they will go nicely together for the um, contrast color and then use this one as the main color. I think that would be very nice. Um, yeah, and this is exactly the sweater I've been looking for because uh, it has a lot of color work and I would need that with two skeins of DK for the contrast colorway uh, because I want to use the most of these. And uh, DK scraps are... I don't really use small amounts of DK. Um, and everybody was suggesting the uh, Tecumseh sweater by Caitlin Hunter because it's all suit color work and DK, but yeah, so many people have knit that sweater that I don't want to knit it. <laughs> so I'm happy to have found this one. Uh, and Verena was thinking of hosting a cow, so if she's gonna host a cow, I'm in. Totally in. <laughs> I am... Um, I just want another colorwork sweater. Ever since I knit the um, sweater by Olga Butano, what's it called? The Woolen Flower? The Woolen? No, that was a tester name. Oh, the Oak Yellow sweater. Now I remember. The Oak Yellow sweater. So ever since I knit that, which is this one. Oops! <laughs> So, ever since I knit this one, sorry, I'm too lazy to put pics in here, so this one. Um, I've been wearing it all the time, and I want another one, but I don't want, I don't want to knit another one of the same pattern. I just want more variety in my wardrobe, so uh, I was looking for another DK sweater pattern, and now I think I found it, so I'm really happy. Um, but I will strive to finish the Olga cardigan first. And the placemats. <sighs> okay, it's Wednesday now, so I have six, five days to finish the placemats. That should be okay. I've done three in one evening, and I've just completed one. Um, yeah, so I have six or seven to go. <laughs> oh, I hope I will make it. Okay. I think that's all for me today. Uh, I still have some Christmas decoration shopping to do, and Christmas stamp shopping because I want to send out my Christmas card. Which I will show on here eventually. Yes, I think that's all for me today. Okay, <laughs> well, I hope you have a very nice couple of weeks. I hope you have a very nice Christmas with your family or friends or whatever. I hope you have a really nice time. I might see you before New Year's. I might. Yeah. Or, or it might just be after New Year's that I record a new podcast. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, well, I still... Uh, again, have a very crafty couple of weeks. Thank you all so, so much for watching. And of course, a huge thank you to all of my patrons for supporting the channel. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Hey. What is that? <laughs>
Hey, what is that? Hey?